presented here is a short tutorial on the purification of oleic acid, especially for quantum dot synthesis, and it's all about this little vessel right here. It has to be made by a glass blower, and it's from this reference shown below. It's special because of how it handles nitrogen. What happens first is nitrogen is coming through the right hand loop downward and goes through that frit at the bottom left in the round part where we have an acetonitrile oleic acid solution. After recrystallization, the flow is altered with these valves such that the acetonitrile with impurities is then pushed out the right hand side of the stem and out into a container. As in all things, we're going to practice good chemical safety. You see we have the appropriate uh, protective gear. We're going to use a funnel for uh, transferring a solution. And we're going to make a 90% acetonitrile, 10% oleic acid solution, typically 20 mils of oleic acid with 180 of acetonitrile. You don't have to be very accurate with this in all honesty. And you're also going to repeat this three times bare minimum, maybe five times if you want to be real careful. Look at the reference for characterization of pure oleic acid if you're not sure. And here's the crazy trick. You see oleic acid and acetonitrile don't actually mix. So you have to violently bubble nitrogen through the frit to artificially make them mix, at which point you can then recrystallize them here in a minus 30 degree dry ice acetone bath. As you can see, the solution is still very violently mixing. And I am going to very, very slowly, painfully slowly, lower the vessel such that that round bottom part is largely surrounded and jacketed by a dry ice acetone bath, which I've already made sure is at minus 30 degrees Celsius. This part's kind of painful, and maybe I ought to build a machine that does this for me. And what's going to happen is the oleic acid will solidify to the sides while the acetonitrile is still actually going to be bubbling violently and taking out all those impurities at the same time. And here we go. I'm typically going to wait 20 or 30 minutes, and of course I'm going to check the temperature. The temperature will go up a little bit, but uh, the heat capacity of a dry ice acetone bath is actually really quite high, so it doesn't go up too much. It does go up, and I do need to watch it for a while, so occasionally I just add a fairly small amount of uh, dry ice. I don't ever need to add too much. Maybe once every half hour, of course, I'm using the correct cryogenic gloves and I stir the solution while monitoring the temperature. Now the ultimate purpose here is that oleic acid is often used in the synthesis of quantum dots, but the purity is rarely ever regulated, and I feel like that's a problem for reproducibility, and you'll make better quantum dots with better oleic acid. Now it's time to reverse the polarity of the nitrogen such that it's not flowing from top to bottom, but rather top to the right. And of course, this is the uh, the spigot where the acetonitrile and impurities will come out. I make certain that I've done the valves correctly because I'm going to seal the vessel. Now you have to be careful. Glass is not really that strong. Uh, it can it can shatter without re really too much pressure. So I'm sure I've done it right, and I'm going to cap the top of the vessel. And I am definitely going to add a clamp. You definitely need a metal clamp for this. Now you notice I haven't added a vessel to catch the acetonitrile. That's because it is going to take a very long time before it comes through that bottom part of the loop, and it's going to take two to three hours before the, the full mass has moved through that little stem. So here I am adding a little catcher for the uh, acetonitrile and byproducts. But I'm under no rush. Now you're going to see that dramatically change on the second recrystallization, which is testimony to how many impurities are being removed by this recrystallization apparatus and procedure. After about 20 minutes, half an hour has, has passed, I feel like the system is equilibrated. You can see the oleic acid stuck to the sides. And uh, here I'm just going to let it uh, take it out for a minute so you can see the acetonitrile slowly coming up the left hand stem. And it, I'm still uh, catching it in a little uh, vessel at the bottom, you just can't see it. But what I want to show you is how slowly that acetonitrile comes out. It's just like molasses. Okay, we've done removing the uh, acetonitrile and byproducts. Again, it did take a very long time. 
and you let it warm up. You're going to add, you're going to recharge it with acetonitrile, uh, recrystallize it while bubbling, the exact same procedure. But what I want to show you is this. I'm now pressurizing the right hand side so that the acetonitrile comes out and look at that flow. It's dramatically faster and that just shows you how many impurities were removed in the first recrystallization step. And again I usually do at least three steps. Now we can't ever fully remove the acetonitrile. Once we're done we warm it up and we put it into a round bottom flask with a stir bar and we're going to attach it to a vacuum to get the last of that acetonitrile out. The material should then be stored in a minus 80 degree freezer. If you do it in a anything else, your lake acid is going to go bad very, very quickly and you kind of wasted your time. And here we hit vacuum and you can see the last of the acetonitrile coming out. Alright, so I hope those of you out in quantum dot land who use oleic acid very frequently, you're going to make better materials and you're going to have more reproducible re results as a result of the use of purified oleic acid.